Hello. Imagine somebody who is very naughty went out looking for trouble. Then he had an excellent idea. He went to a five-star hotel and dumped a huge can of garbage all over the lobby floor. Do you think he should be fined? Now let's think of situation two. Somebody is feeling unwell. But he has to go out to run some errands, like getting some tax return documents. While midway, he felt he must warm it, but he don't want to make a mess, so he tried to find the nearest washroom. Therefore, he went into a five-star hotel. Unfortunately, he didn't make it and vomited all over the hotel lobby. Do you think he should be fined? Most likely, you will probably think that the first person should be fined, but the second person should not. This is very logical. My reason is that the first action is done by controllable eye, and the latter is by uncontrollable eye. I am going to talk about the difference between controllable and uncontrollable eye, and how can you use. This distinction to your benefit. Controllable eye is the part of you that you can either directly control, or is a fundamental part of your identity. For example, I love public speaking. I am giving a speech right now. I just watched a cute dog video, etc. Uncontrollable eye is any part that. You cannot directly control. For example, uncontrollable I feel happy. Uncontrollable I feel sad. Uncontrollable I feels tired. Uncontrollable I is fit or not so fit, etc. In other words, for the opening situation, situation one is done by controllable I. And situation two is done by uncontrollable eye. Why is it so important to distinguish between these two? Because my advice is to treat uncontrollable eye as another person to be influenced to your advantage, instead of simply being part of you. There are several specific beneficial actions you can take. First, don't feel guilty of uncontrollable eyes action. Don't punish yourself or others for the action of uncontrollable eye. Use specific strategies to modify uncontrollable eye for your own benefit, instead of simply use brute force perseverance. Quote, like what the North Korean government tells you in their propaganda. Mixing up controllable eye and uncontrollable eye can have some very bad consequences. For example, there have been numerous cases of parents punishing children severely for bedwetting, causing poor psychological health after growing up. In fact, a National Institute of Health study shows that. Punishing bedwetting in children increases depression. This is because such parents are punishing controllable eye for the action of uncontrollable eye. It is akin to that Steve stole my apple, but I go beat up Mary. Do you think that is fair for Mary? Instead, a better thing to do. Would be to use practical means to try to solve the problem, such as reducing water intake at evening, going to washroom before bed, etc. Therefore, one can see it is very important to distinguish between controllable and uncontrollable eye. Controllable eye is either a fundamental part of you or you can control. Uncontrollable eye you cannot control. My advice is to treat uncontrollable eye as another person to be influenced by specific actions to your interest, 
instead of the same thing as controllable I. Mixing those up can have very bad consequences. Thank you for listening.